education sector is always interesting and joining us now to talk about a new form of education in South Africa, that's Pioneer Academies, and he's the founder and CEO, Chinesi Chigioke. Chinesi, welcome to you. Pioneer Academies mm -hmm. in itself, it's not a name that tells me very much, so what is this? Good morning, David. Thanks for having me here. Um, our goal in starting Pioneer Academies has been to expand access to really excellent schooling, and I think for us that, that has three parts. Uh, I think the first is, is, is a really focus on what is excellence and how do you how do you pr uh, provide an education that prepares young people not just to get into university, which is the sort of the, the dominant focus of the last two years of most schools, which is you know, taking a matric exam, but actually prepares young people to be successful once they're in university and beyond. And we, we, um, we live in a country here in South Africa where uh, the majority of students who get into university don't make their way through it, aren't successful there. And I think we've really got to, if you're talking about excellence, you've really got to focus on how you prepare young people to be successful once they're there. Yeah, I think the point has been made that it's supposed to be a ticket uh, mm. And it is a ticket in the sense that you can get admitted to university, mm. but the universities have said a lot of the people coming in are just not ready mm -hmm. in various ways, socially, mm. you know, mm. linguistically, mm. Uh, but also in terms of the hard nuts and bolts of yeah. their subjects. Well, I, I think we believe there are three parts, three parts of student success that we've really got to cultivate, and it's got to be holistic. It cannot be just test prep and knowledge and sort of mm. how, to, how, to, how do I perform on my, on my matric in November, right? Mm. Um, and the three parts for us are, one is academic excellence, we think that's important, but what's, what's is a, what we think is more important than sort of the knowledge and the skills of, you know, executing an equation are the ability to use that information to solve problems. Mm. And I think that is, that's if you're going to be relevant and able to create and lead uh, in the world, not, not frankly today, but even more so in the future, then you've got to be able to solve problems. How that's to think. First. How to think, absolutely, how to think and how to, how to use what you've got, what you know, to uh, encounter unfamiliar situations, mm. right? The second part is, is leadership and service and how to work with others to turn those good ideas into solutions and into results and into impact. Mm. And I think that, that has to do with, uh, that could be leadership, it could be influence, it could be followership. And for us, that's, that's, uh, that puts a big emphasis on, lead on our leadership programs, on our community service programs, on our entrepreneurship programs. And the third thing, uh, and this I think is a large part of the, the beyond academic reasons for su so success or not in university mm -hmm. is what we call personal mastery. Mm -hmm. And that is a focus on developing the self-awareness, perseverance, very important perseverance, and, and integrity to be able to be successful for self and others. And if, if, if you can do those three things, the academic excellence, mm -hmm. the leadership and service, and the personal mastery, mm -hmm. then as a young person, you'll, you, I, I think you'll do pretty well once you get, get into university and beyond. O all right, I'm going to ask you in a moment how that would differ, say, from some of the good schools we've got already. Sure. But w w uh, what is the model for this? Uh, how many kids? How many schools? What kind sure. of buildings? Sure. Where? Sure, sure. Um, so uh, the second part of our, of our goals I mentioned was making this accessible. So we spent a, a lot of time in the bulk of our focus and effort uh, and research and work with other great schools in South Africa and across the world has been on, on developing the, the teaching and learning, the, the, the excellence part of it. But the other part of it is the accessibility part of it. And that's, and that's very important to us and to the families we speak with as well. And that is affordability. Our schools range uh, in fees for anywhere from 2,000 to uh, 3,500 rand a month. Well, that's really at the low end of the uh, the lower end of the private school sector. Yeah, of the private school sector, it is uh, we, sort of anything. There is, you know, the, the, the traditional private school is is 80,000 plus, and there a set of other uh, schools now sort of in the 60 and and the 50,000 per year, and and there's a, there's this huge dearth of of options uh, for families who are super stretched to get there. And there's uh, they're also, and frankly, a lot of families who pay uh, 60 to 80,000, 80, all that glitters is in gold. Mm -hmm. And so um, there is, th there's certainly a need to, to, to provide options. So for where, how are you going to be able to offer this? Uh, who's paying? Who's <laughs> helping you? <laughs> Fair question. Um, so we, we've got investors, a, s a small set of private investors, who are uh, who are very thankful to have and who have a long-term view on education. You don't invest in schooling to, to turn a quick profit. That's uh, that, that, that would, one, on one hand, compromise education too much, and secondly, schools don't operate that way. Mm. Um, I think you've got, you need to have a five to ten year horizon at mm. least to think about what, you know, building a healthy mm. school. And so we're very blessed to have a set of private investors. What sort of money in total are we talking about? Presumably you can't mention them. Or they sure, don't, but sure. Ha what kind of mon money are we talking? And where is this now? Is it still an idea? Have you got a building? Ah, have you absolutely. hired people? Yes, no, good, good question. Now the school opens in, our first school will open in Ramonde in 25th, January 2015. We open for enrollment, so we've got families uh, enrolling uh, already. And so, um, and the, the, the sec then we'll, from thereafter, we intend to grow the network. And so the second school would open in 2016 thereafter. We've got a, a team put together. We're actually 
and we're taking our time really building the, making sure we got the right people from a, a faculty standpoint, and mm. so we started that process, and we're appointing a head of school at the end of this month, and mm. we're very excited to introduce that person to, yeah. to the community in Armande and in so South of Joburg. When you get the school going, yes. uh, how's it going to be different? Will, if I walk in there, mm, will mm. I see things that are not the same as yes. your good private and yeah. public schools that we have already? I, I think there are two things in particular that will really make, this, uh, make the Pioneer Academy distinctive and, and anyone walking and be a student or a parent or yourself if you come visit us mm. um, uh, will notice. The first is how our students learn. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier the real focus on problem solving. And so in every, in every uh, lesson, in every sort of module, in every subject, we, insi we have what we call uh, try before teach or try first cycle. So we insist that students work to try to solve unfamiliar problems before we ever teach. The, the you'll, 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 if, you th sort of if we think back to our schooling days, the traditional model is a teacher comes in, and I recall from when I used to be a teacher, I would teach, uh, I would introduce a topic, I'd say try to go home for homework, and let's discuss it tomorrow. We've got to ch uh, change that order and get students trying to solve problems they're unfamiliar with first. Mm. So that's the first thing that's different, is you'll see a lot more student-driven uh, work around problem solving. The second is the way we teach, right? And uh, in, in a traditional classroom, you'd have one teacher, 15, 20, 25 students, whatever the, whatever the number is. Uh, we have a team teaching model um, where we have a team of three to five teachers responsibly, collectively, responsible collectively for grade or for subject. And that, uh, that has a, a ton of benefits. It, has, um, it creates for every student access to sort of a village, it takes a village to raise a child. It's every student mm -hmm. access to a team as opposed to a single teacher. And it also gets, uh, it creates an environment in which teachers can uh, work together to really study how are our students doing and improve instruction. Mm. Presumably you have to teach the teachers. Uh, and, and whose sure. concept that you're talking about? Sure. Is this your idea that sure. you've developed? Is sure. it your mission? Sure. Yeah, well, we've got a, a wonderful small team who are working together on it, and we've got wonderful advisors as well. Um, so the, it's, it's for me, it's, it's been, I mean, I'm, I'm, I had started sort of, sort of vision for me for an, a number of years. Um, I mean, is this your baby? Sure, but, I, I, but it's my baby, but it's not mine alone. Perhaps yeah, that's yeah. the way to say it. Yeah. Um, I think there are a team of uh, experienced educators along with myself really, really working on this. Um, um, and, and so I think that's, uh, it's, it's, it, it's hard to claim it <laughs> personally, I think. Where will you be and how do people get in touch? Sure. We'll be on Monday, as I mentioned. Uh, the be I'll encourage anyone who's interested to find out more, particularly parents and families who'd like to get to know us. Is it called the Pioneer Academy? It's called Pioneer Academies. Mm -hmm. And the website is uh, pioneeracademies.co.za. Mm -hmm. It's the easiest way to get in touch with us uh, or on Facebook as well. We've got it on the screen over there. Wonderful. Well, that's very interesting. And uh, as always with these things, we haven't got enough time. So mm -hmm. I think what we will do when you're open, then you mm -hmm. must come back and tell us in a few months how it's gone. Absolutely. Uh, which would be interesting to do.